As you're likely aware, a novel coronavirus outbreak was reported in December 2019 from Wuhan in China. The virus responsible for this outbreak is called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2 and it can cause a pulmonary disease called Coronavirus Disease 2019 or COVID-19. Nam Prakarvija Urgia. My name is Rolda Esker Garrigos. We're Infectious Disease Fellow at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. A review article titled Treatment Consideration for COVID-19, a critical review of the evidence, will be published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In this article, we provide an objective review of the evidence behind the proposed therapies for COVID-19. New data is coming out at an unprecedented pace, so the information in this review is only as current as of the time the article was written. So let me just start by saying that currently, there is no proven treatment for COVID-19. True. Most of the published studies suffer from poor design, lack of control arms, or difficult analysis, making any inference challenging. Many clinical trials are underway, and hopefully based on those trials, we will find out what works and what does not. The quest to find a treatment is focused on using antiviral and immunomodulatory drugs. So let's talk about the antivirals first. We'll begin with chloroquine. It's an anti-malarial drug with antiviral and immunomodulatory properties. Because of shortage of chloroquine and a superior safety profile, hydroxychloroquine is used as its alternative. In vitro, the antiviral activity of chloroquine has been demonstrated against a number of viruses like SARS-CoV, MERS, dengue, chikungunya. However, it has failed to show any benefit in clinical or animal models. In fact, for chikungunya, its use is associated with more chronic arthralgia. For SARS-CoV-2, the combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin gained worldwide attention after Dr. Didier Raoul's group in France showed some benefit in a series of studies. However, the International Society of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy released a statement that one of the studies did not meet the society's expected standards. There have also been studies with conflicting response with the combination therapy. We also need to keep in mind that chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine can prolong QT interval and increase the risk of arrhythmia. And the risk is further exacerbated when azithromycin is used in combination. So at this point, we recommend that chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine should only be used in the context of clinical trials. Now let's talk about favipiravir. Favipiravir is an RNA polymerase inhibitor that was developed for treatment of influenza and has been used against Ebola for post-exposure prophylaxis. In an open-label study, favipiravir use was associated with shorter time to viral clearance and significant improvement in chest imaging when compared to lopinavir ritonavir. Clinical trials are underway to confirm this efficacy. Lopinavir ritonavir gained attention as one of the early therapies for COVID-19. For SARS-CoV-1, lack of lopinavir ritonavir use was independently associated with worse outcome. For SARS-CoV-2, a randomized controlled trial failed to show benefit over standard of care. However, in the trial, the drug was administered at a median of 13 days after symptom onset, so we don't know if it would have been useful when used in the early phase of the infection. Moving on to remdesivir. Remdesivir is a nucleoside analog that inhibits viral RNA polymerase. In a study of 53 patients with severe COVID-19, compassionate use remdesivir showed improvement in the oxygen status of 68% of the patients. However, there was no control group to make any meaningful conclusions. Gilead has now stopped supplying remdesivir for compassionate use in adults, so the drug is available only through clinical trials or expanded access programs. Now let's move on to immunomodulators. In the later course of infection, cytokines such as GMCSF and interleukin-6 produce a pro-inflammatory state that can cause severe pneumonia and ARDS. So there has been interest in the use of pharmacological compounds directed against these cytokines. Lenzilumab and gemcilumab are two anti-GMCSF antibodies that are being evaluated in clinical trials. Similarly, tocilizumab, cerilumab, and siltuximab are IL-6 inhibitors that are used for cytokine release syndrome associated with CAR-T therapy and are being studied for COVID-19 treatment. In a cohort of 21 patients, clinical improvement was noted with tocilizumab use. 
However, since there was no control group, it is unclear if the patients would have improved just with aggressive standard of care, even without tocilizumab. Now, it's important to know that blocking the cytokines may curb fever and inflammation, but this approach also blunts the host defense against infection. Lastly, the US FDA has approved the emergency investigational use of convalescent plasma for the treatment of critically ill patients. It is collected from recovered individuals and has shown clinical improvement in some reports. The preliminary findings are promising, but the small number and the uncontrolled nature of these studies means that we need randomized controlled clinical trials to confirm these findings. We do not yet know which, if any, of these compounds will eventually be proven effective against SARS-CoV-2. Thus, the collaboration of healthcare community to engage patients for participation in clinical trials is essential. Until the results of these properly conducted studies are available, there is no drug that is considered to be of proven clinical benefit for the treatment of COVID-19. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.